Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second part of my water descaler video. Maybe you remember that thing from my last video, where you can tune the level of cleanliness of your water. Well, I managed it to um, uncover the PCB and we will have a look on it today and see what it does and how it works. As I mentioned before, it wasn't easy to remove this resin here because the underside where all the components were located uh, was completely filled with some kind of quartz sand or fine gravel or whatever that made it completely impossible to use any rotary tool like grinding or drilling because it destroyed any tool in seconds and even my chisel had some bad nicks and dents after that. And well, it looks like they filled up uh, the case with this kind of sand and then poured some uh, plastic inside, placed the board, poured some more plastic and that's it. Uh, the problem is even if this device is working, if an, even if it does what it should, uh, a respectable manufacturer doesn't do that. It makes it completely unrepairable. Fortunately, the plastic resin came away, but it also took all the components. And I was surprised to see that it's all SMD. There are, well, I think there, are, there have been two or three uh, true hole resistors, but everything else was SMD. Okay, let's have a look on the PCB itself. On the left side you see footprints from two large transistors with some copper heat sinks in the left upper corner. Uh, that's part of the voltage regulator, input voltage regulator. It takes the 12 volt that comes from the wall power supply and regulates it to somewhere between 10 and 12 volt because below 10 volt the LED display uh, won't work anymore. <clears throat> then we have in the center of the boards chip 1 and 2. They are marked uh, from, uh, well I marked them. That's two LM339s uh, operational amplifier each chip has four of them and that's the frequency modulation circuit what it does you have heard in the last video and then on the right side with this uh, SMD resistor arrays that's the output uh, power stage with four transistors a bunch of resistors and well, we will see the rest when we look at the schematic diagram. By the way, it wasn't easy to uh, find out what the chips are because they came out in fragments. But most of the time there was enough material to see the part number and, well, all the other components that are still buried in the resin could be measured because they are perfectly okay, just upside down, so all the resistors, capacitors can be measured still. Uh, yeah. So let's have a look at the schematic diagram. You can see in the left upper corner, just as it was on the PCB, there is the voltage regulator. Nothing fancy, two transistors in parallel with a Zener diode, a couple of resistors and you have your regulated voltage. 
that voltage goes to the display, the LED display with the potentiometer. Uh, one of the potentiometers uh, just regulates the LEDs and the other one goes down to the circuit with the two LM339s. And uh, well, I was a little bit lazy on that and uh, I didn't draw the entire circuit, but the LM339s were used to uh, create this FM signal from 0 to 2 or 4 kilohertz, depending on the pot uh, position. Uh, there is a bunch of resistors, there is a bunch of uh, capacitors and some tracks you can build the circuit you uh, your own if you want. Uh, what is important is one track goes over to the right side to the 40106 uh, inverter chip. That's a digital inverter with a Schmidt trigger inside. Uh, it has six inverters in one chip. And they are used as drivers for the four transistor on the uh, right side. And um, I also drawn the, the signals. So if a, a positive signal or a, a one signal comes from the LM339 to the first inverter, it is converted to a zero signal. Then it's converted again to a one signal for the upper two inverters and the zero signal for the lower two. And if you look at the transistors, we have PNP and NPN transistors. They are the same transistors on the top and on the, on the bottom. So the PNP transistor only turns on when it gets a low signal and the NPN turns on when it gets a high signal. So at the end uh, you get one transistor of the upper set and one of the lower set and the current flows through the coils either from up to down or from down to up depending on which two transistors uh, are powered on. The whole bunch of uh, SMD resistors you have seen on the PCB they are all series and parallel. They uh, sum up to 22, uh, 23 ohms. So that's the four 23 ohm resistors that I drawn. There is a small 0 0.5 ohm resistor on the bottom that goes to ground and uh, voltage uh, comes directly to the first transistor, the first two transistors from the voltage regulator. There is an additional feedback line back to the LM339 circuit and that detects when no uh, coils are connected so the entire uh, unit goes off, uh, even the, LC, uh, the LED display goes off and uh, well, that's it. And something we can clearly see here there is absolutely no way to regulate or change the amplitude of the signal because we have a digital circuit, a hex inverter, that drives the transistors. They are either on or off and there is nothing in between. Uh, we can also, we can't change the uh, supply voltage because that is given from the voltage regulator. Uh, well, yes, the only thing we can change is the frequency range of the sweep and that's everything we can adjust and I think that's not enough. Okay, so let me say this. Even if this device was made with the best intentions and people who believe that it actually works, there is so much wrong with it I mean, you, you can't even adjust properly to the kind of t uh, water tubes you have. Um, there are plastic tubes, copper, steel, stainless steel. Uh, that's just not enough uh, only to uh, adjust the frequency range. You also need more power for different types of 
pipes and tubes. Yeah, and then the whole resin uh, thing, everything is potted to the maximum, cannot be repaired. No, sorry, that's wrong. Okay, thanks for watching. Thank you.